What up friends, my name is Thomas and in this video we're going to be showing you how to set up a ClojureScript project from scratch. This is the minimal you need to get started with ClojureScript and there are going to be timestamps in the description below so you can just jump to the sections that are most interesting to you. So we're going to be covering three things in this video. The first thing is some housekeeping items that you'll need in order to run a Clojure or ClojureScript project. The second thing is we're going to quickly run over what ClojureScript actually is, and then we're going to run into the meat of this video, which is going to be how to actually set up your ClojureScript project. Housekeeping items. So what we're going to need is three things in order to run a Clojure or ClojureScript project project. The first thing is you need the Java JDK. The second thing is you need something to actually run your Clojure program. In our case, we're going to be using the Clojure command line tool. However, you can also use another tool like line or boot. These are all kind of comparable in certain respects. And the last thing that you will need is a code editor. I'm going to be using Atom, but feel free to use any editor that you are comfortable with. And for every single one of these things that I just mentioned, I have videos in the description and there will be some in the card above and they'll show you how to set up everything like I am doing right now. All right. So the first thing that we need to do to start a ClojureScript program is we need somewhere for our code to live. We need a ClojureScript project. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder on my desktop and we'll call it hello-world. We're going to open up that folder and create another folder inside of it called source. This is just a common convention that we use in programming and specifically for the closure command line tool, it's going to look for a directory called source unless you specify otherwise, which is where your code will live. So let's just close that up and we can press that for Adam. We'll open up Adam. And inside Adam, we want to open the project that we just created on our desktop that was called Hello World. So to do that, we do Command Shift O. And you're going to make sure that you are on desktop if that's where you actually put your Hello World project. Click Hello World and we'll just open that up and we'll see that the structure looks exactly like we just created. So the first thing we're going to do is create our ClojureScript file. And we're just going to call it app.cljs. Then inside of app.clgs, we do open paren and close paren, type ns, and that stands for namespace, and we'll call it app. App is going to be the same name as you labeled the file. We'll save that, and on line three, we'll write our first little piece of ClojureScript code, and it'll be js slash console.log, hello world. All right, and with that, we can open up a terminal and I'm using iterm2 feel free to open up anything you like and you're gonna move into the desktop so we'll do command shift tilde desktop slash hello dash world clear that up see that everything is where it should be all right and we're gonna actually use the command line tool this is the closure command line tool it's called CLJ or you could write it as closure and we're going to do CLJ, and you have to specify a main file. So we're going to say clgs.main dash dash compile app. And notice that app will be whatever you put here. And we are also going to tell it to start a REPL at the same time. So we'll press enter on that. And forewarning, this will not actually work, but I wanted to show you what this error looks like so that if you ever encounter it, you kind of have an idea of where to go from here. And essentially what this is saying is, I don't know where to find ClojureScript. So what we can do for that is go back into our project. We're just gonna collapse source so you can see where I'm putting this file. And you're gonna create a new file called depths.eden. This file is like a package.json file, but for ClojureScript. And what it takes is a map. And we're just going to say depths, open curly brace, close curly brace. And then we're going to write org.closure slash closure script. And then after that, you put another map. And in there, we're going to tell it the version of ClojureScript that we want to use. And the latest version as of the, this video is 1.10.597. We can save that and that should be it. So now we have our app.cljs file, which is where our code lives. And we have our depths.eden file, which tells our project what 
tools or what libraries our project depends on. And right now we have one which is just ClojureScript. So let's go back to the terminal and we're going to once again run that command. And you're going to notice that files are being generated on the left, CP cache and out. That is just what ClojureScript is generating right now. In addition to that, a new browser window is going to automatically be opened up for us. And it's going to take us to localhost 9000, which is loading right now. Once that is actually loaded, we should be able to open the console and then check to see if the hello world that we console logged is actually in the console. So let's open that up and we can see that hello world is indeed there. And this is your minimal ClojureScript project. You have written a ClojureScript file, we have compiled it, run it in the browser, and the next part is I just want to show you that there is a REPL that's automatically connected to the browser. So let's open up the terminal again and you can see that I have a CLJS.user prompt. What can we do with this? The code that you run is actually going to be evaluated inside of the browser evaluation environment. So let's actually see what this means. What if we wanted to console log something from here? js slash console.log and instead of hello world we'll write hello sailor close paren and watch the terminal over here on the left in the console. When I press enter you see it says hello sailor there. Okay awesome. What else could we do? Well we could console log I don't know maybe some arithmetic so we could do plus one one and then we'll see that we get two in the environment here. There are even more interesting things that you can do with this. One of them that I want to show you is that you can interact with the entire browser page. This is really exciting because any of the APIs that you have exposed to you through JavaScript, you can use through this REPL in ClojureScript. So let's check out, and let's just say we want to grab, I don't know, every single paragraph tag that appears on this page. And a paragraph tag would be the thing that, for example, welcome to the ClojureScript browser REPL is wrapped inside of. So we're going to console log and we'll do document dot get elements by tag name. And we'll say get me every single p tag on the page. And just to clarify document dot get elements by tag name. That is not a closure script thing. That is a JavaScript thing. That is a DOM thing. And you'll notice that we have now we have an HTML collection inside of our browser. Let's actually dig into what the first element looks like. Oh, snap. We see that it's welcome to the ClojureScript browser REPL, just like right there. All right, all right, cool, 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 cool. With that, you have now seen how to run a Clojure program and interact with, with the REPL. The last thing that I want to show you is what if you wanted to go back to the Atom editor what if we wanted to, this to say something different? So for example, we could say, hello, between two parens, and we save that. If we go back to the browser console, or the browser in general where our code was, we refresh that, and we're gonna see that it will still log hello world. Okay, so why did that happen? Well, the reason why this happens is because every single time that you change the actual source file, you will need to recompile your closure script code. So if we wanted to see this take effect, we would have to actually cancel out of this, and I'll clear that up, and we'd have to rerun this command. And what we see is that a new browser has opened. If we open up the browser console once again, we are going to see that it should now say hello between two parens. Okay, so if that's the case, that every single time I change this file, I have to recompile this. That can be a little time consuming. Is there anything we can do to make this a little more efficient? Yes, there is. And this is the last thing that I'm gonna show you in this video. So we're gonna again cancel out of this terminal. And what you can do is run the exact same command except move your cursor in front of the dash dash compile and you're gonna do dash dash watch and we'll type source. source is the name of obviously this directory right here. And what this watch command does is it says, every single time I see this change, I'm going to recompile your code for you.
So let's actually run that and see what happens. So just like every other time a new browser has opened for us, uh, REPL will be connected to it and our closure code has been compiled and injected into the page. And we can see that it says hello between two parens. So now if we want to see this code actually get changed, I'll move this over here and close this up a little bit. Let's change this to Sailor. We'll save that. And you're gonna be like, oh, well, the code hasn't actually reloaded. Well, the reason why the code hasn't reloaded is because we still have to refresh the browser in order to take in the new code that has been recompiled for us. So now it should say, awesome. That is everything involved in creating a minimal closure script program, running the program, and then connecting a REPL to it and interacting with that REPL. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next time.